There is no future for an Imperium led by a corpse. I stand alongside warriors of honor. Our duty is honor itself. The Ultramarines shall fall today. Heretic, this battle shall be your end. Rivalries are formed from fierce competition and between those who strive to be the best. Space Marine Steve here, and in this battle, Play on Tabletop puts its pride on the line against arguably one of the best and biggest Warhammer 40,000 content creators in the world. Mini Wargamer Dave, co-founder of Mini Wargaming, is in the studio today to face off against our co-founder and executive producer, Takoana, to prove once and for all that- We are not a t-shirt company. Whoa. There are some really big stakes in this game. If I win, Dave has to embrace the greater good and play the Tau. If I lose, however, apparently I need to admit we are a t-shirt company. He is a t-shirt company and he needs to admit to that if I win. But that's okay, because I'm gonna win. I have to win. No, you don't. T-shirts, T-shirts, T-shirts. Year of Steve 2022, gonna get a shirt, yeah! If I win, Tack needs to design me a t-shirt. And that's awesome, because then he's just gonna embrace the fact that he is a t-shirt company. But if I lose, I'm gonna have to use Tau in a battle report, which I'm not so keen on. But that's fine, because I'm pretty sure the dice are gonna be on my side today. Dave's beautiful Emperor's Children is led by a Chaos Lord as his Warlord and a Lord Discornit on a Hellstalker. He has two units of Chaos Space Marines, both riding in Rhinos. Ugh, I love Rhinos. Great choice, Dave. And a unit of Cultists, Chaos Spawn, Warp Talents, and Mauler Fiends are all fast moving threats, but the really scary units are the Obliterators and the two Decimator Engines. I love it. My Decimators, which I'm not really used to fielding, they're new for my army. I'm excited to feel them because they're super powerful in the shooting phase, which I'm not really used to because I'm used to fielding world eaters who don't really have shooting. Tack responds with a captain in Gravis armor that is upgraded to be a chapter master, supported by a Primaris Lieutenant, a Primaris Tech Marine. He's got a big squad of assault intercessors, a squad of regular intercessors, and his personal favorite troop, the Infiltrators. He has aggressors, a Redemptor Dread, and Blade Guard veterans as his elites. He's also brought two fast moving units, Outriders and the Invader ATVs. But to counter Dave's monsters, a unit of Eradicators, Hellblasters, and a Gladiator Reaper tank are gonna need to do that job. My favorite unit is Gladys, because apparently we have a thing about naming units here. The mission is Scorched Earth from Chapter Approved 2021. There are six objectives on this map and up to 15 points per round available to a player that holds one, two, or more than his opponent in their command phase starting from round two. For a secondary, his tack took oaths a moment, a trick you probably learned from me, I'd imagine. Raise the banners high and bring it down as those decimators must go down if tack doesn't want to design that t-shirt. Dave took grind them down because Korn wants it, scoring three points if he kills more than his opponent in each turn. He took engage on all fronts, which makes sense with his fast moving army, scoring points for being in three or four of the table quarters. And he also took raise the banners high, scoring a point for every objective he plants his flag on. Before we get into the game, I want to introduce our sponsor for today, Ravage Star, Armies of the Veil Touched, a crowdfunding project led by mini war gamer Dave himself. He influenced the design of the Veil Touch, as you could probably easily tell, and the first faction in the line of highly detailed science fiction miniatures that can be collected painted, and proxied in a variety of tabletop games. Be sure to check out the description below if you want to get in on the ground floor of what is going to be an amazing line of miniatures. Looking at deployment, Tack is spreading out across the battlefield while Dave is getting really aggressive and putting all of his units on the line. However, it does seem like Dave is choosing just the flanks, which is actually kind of interesting. Tack scores points for having units in the center of the map, so you'd think he'd want to fight for that. Once Dave puts down a single decimator, you know the second decimator is going to go beside it. And then if he's got two decimators on one side, you know his Lord Discord has to go with the decimators. So he's committing too much to that flank. That means he's minimized the range of his threats, and I can have the other side of the board. 
attack ends his deployment with infiltrators pressuring Dave's cultists. Dave has got squads of marines and his warlord in the rhinos, and warp talons and obliterators are both held in reserves. Do you want first or second? Did you ask me? I don't know. Yeah, I went first, sir. With Ultramarines, usually fine going first or second because of the redeploy strat. That's a four, and I don't have a choice. Yeah, you must go first. I must go first. Let's have a good game. <laughs> All right. Looking at the table, Tack is positioned fairly well, so if it were me, Space Marine Steve, I would probably not redeploy. I am burning two command points. Be rapid redeploy. Second guessing your decisions? This is why the Ultramarines have this ability. It's just the way that it is. Deal with it. Indecisive. Got it. Okay. Well, against my better judgment, two CP to redeploy Hellblasters, a Tech Marine, and sideways shuffle some Blade Guard Vets. For Seal of Oath, I will elect that Decimator Engine to be my Seal of Oath target. You reroll stuff? I uh, reroll all hit wounds and wound rolls against it. Finally done all the pre-game, pre-turn, pre-tack nonsense. Why don't we finally play some Warhammer? In the command phase. Yes. I'm going to take up to 11 command points. This tech marine is going to tell this vehicle to be better. These uh, infiltrators are going to move up the board. Stay away. You know what? This is this is ridiculous. You left a flank open. I left a flank I, open. There's a I, big crater in the way. There's nothing I can do. Did you help set up this board? That's beside the point. They can already zoom up and hit that objective. Dreadnought moves eight, so it's going to move up and go right there. Tack pushes forward, getting the Blade Guard veterans to the center of the table, maybe gonna score him some olds a moment. The Meltas are going to zoom up. The Assault Intercessors here are going to uh, raise banners there. The Hellblasters over here are raising this banner. Going into the shooting phase, Front row here of Eradicators are going to elect the Decimator Engine in the back as a single target. As it is a single target, I am going to be able to roll these dice twice. I'm not really looking so forward to tax Eradicators because they are incredibly powerful and they could very easily destroy any unit they choose to fire at. So hitting on threes, there is three misses there. However, because I elected that as the uh, Seal of Oath target, I get to reroll all hits. Yeah. This is a strength eight melted weapon versus your toughness of seven, so I'll be winning on threes. I can pick those up. I really appreciate that, Strat. Five demon saves, five Dave saves. Okay, listen you, I'm gonna save these. And I save three of them. You do save three. Do you want a command point reroll? Yes. Nope. Tack gets seven on his two damage rolls, but not enough to take down the decimator. I will reroll the two, because I'm gonna get greedy. Let's see if I farm it back. On a five up, I am not spending it. Uh, I am spending it, so I go down to 10, and then I'm now gonna reroll the two into a two. So, still seven damage. Take that. Take that. I'm down to five wounds with this decimator, and he's not happy about it. The help officers are gonna go next. I'm gonna spend two command points for uncompromising fire, which means even though they performed an action in the preceding turn, they're still able to shoot. Take me down to eight, however, and farm one back, so I'm back up to nine. I really wish they were in range of the engine, but they're not. So I've got to decide what is more important to me. A Muller Fiend that can move 10 and make a very long charge, or sticking your Rhino in your back zone right now. And I think I'm going to go for the Rhino. Really hurts my feelings when uh, my Rhinos get destroyed, so I hope that doesn't happen in this game. For that reason, I'm going to supercharge. No, not the Rhinos! Tack rolls individually to see if any of the Hal Blasters die, but I mean, naturally, Tack is fine. Ran on fours, that's not very good at all. Luckily, I've got a lieutenant nearby and get two more. Seven at AP four at the moment. All right, you don't have a demon save on that one. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Am I gonna win the moral victory? You kill me, I feel so guilty. Nick is waiting for an explosion. Uh huh. I wanted to appease him early on. So ah, so this you, is for Nick, is what you're saying, okay. if you will. Oh, come on! Oh, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no, that's bad. That's gonna kill me. Spawn. D three mortal wounds. One. one. Ah, okay. Yeah, All right. Mauler fiend. Two. Decimator number one. Three. Decimator number two. Three. Oh, Lord Discordant. 
One. Okay, all right, all right, all right. You're now I gotta roll for the guys inside. So there's another 10 dice. We're here playing a dice game. Rolling dice is what we do, right? Clearly. <laughs> okay, one dice there. Does your tank shot? My tank has not shot. Your tank has not shot? Please put them behind. Just please put them behind and not make your job so easy? The tank was strategically placed right here to force you to deploy your guys back. I'm hearing the language of excuses for killing your friends. Do you need a hug? Nick's right there, he could give you a hug. Thanks for the explosion. <laughs> One of my ATVs is going to go into Decimate Engine. The other ATV is going to go into the Muller Fiend in front. Melta into the Decimate Engine first. We'll see if they hit. Hitting on threes, only one. Tack, no! If you were gonna kill a Decimator engine, you should have shot everything at it because Dave saves, it lives, and now you, you're gonna lose. Goddess is going to fire into the Muller Fiend up front. Does the Muller Fiend have a name? Yes. Okay, what is his name? Molly. I'm gonna be hitting on twos. Hurting Molly's feelings, man. I'm gonna try to hurt more than Molly's feelings. Twin onslaught Catling cannon now, and Tack is probably hitting with everything, wounding with everything, and Dave. Oh. Sorry, Dave. Could you roll better? Okay, so down to two. Okay. Welcome to my world, Dave. So these are the infiltrators into the cultists hitting on threes. How did you uh, get every. Yeah, and there's a six, so there's one auto wound. Dave, welcome to my world. Five, six, seven, eight. Oh, Ooh. it saved two so far. Three. And I saved another nun, so that's six that have been killed because the Nesh wanted it. Sure. Okay, so I gotta kill these five that are in the touching the cover first, and then this one to make it charge harder. It's all about the run. So you don't wanna kill it? I don't wanna kill it. Okay. I just wanna wound it down to three. I'm gonna trap my mullet thing. Yes. It's inhumane. How many shots from the macroplasma? Oh wow. What has this game devolved into? I'm enjoying it immensely. You know what, Tack? Yes. I'm proud of you. You're doing very well. Thank you, Dave. Well, I appreciate that. It means a lot to me. As, as a grandfather in this, uh, in this YouTube channeling. <laughs> oh Plasma into the Rhino. Uh, I missed once. This is strength nine, so I will be wounding on threes at AP four. Uh, I did too good. I might have done too good there. All right, now I'm gonna see if I blow up. Yes! <laughs> Wait, are you sure you want that? I, I think so. <laughs> Got six guys in there. Let's see if any of them die. Statistically, one will, and that's three. Bink, bink. Oh, yeah. Bink. Mollerfine, explosion. Gets three damp. Wow, holy damage cranked in this game. Outriders into the uh, remaining Chaos Space Marines. You don't have to be so efficient. That is six of them. I mean, six? Yeah. Chaos Space Marines still only have one wound each, so. <laughs> okay, they're dead. Oh, that's tough, Dave. I won't say too much, though. Don't want to rub salt in that one wound you have. Infantry Squad is going to charge into the cultist or try to, um, because that would give me that objective. Well, that is a seven. All right, so mm -hmm. hitting on threes. I have an idea. Uh, okay. How about for the rest of the game, I roll the orange dice? Yeah, we can switch. Really? Yeah, we can switch. That would be very confusing. Take a save! No! Uh, Do you have any AP? I have no AP. Okay. So I'm able to make my t shirt saves. Oh, what? You're okay. Oh! Okay, well, you take out three. They hit on fours. One hit, and then that doesn't wound. Okay, but that's fine. They weren't trained for that, they were trained to hold objectives. Two CP, they're gonna auto pass. Okay. Yes. No morale check needed for them. They're incredibly important to me. Oh, okay. Rhino down, Rhino down. Mollerfiend almost down, Decimator almost down. It's gonna be a rough one. Like he, he had a really good first turn. I really feel it because my rhinos are very special to me. I think Dave thinks I had a better turn one than I did. One of those Decimators had to go down. Two for bring it down, but what he really wanted was to take down a Decimator, which he did. Dave kicks up to 10 command points and has a fat list of things to do in his turn. I'm going to regenerate some wounds on my Mauler Fiends. The one on the far side is going back up to 10. This Decimator engine is going to regain a wound. 
back up to 10. This one back here went to three. And then this one out front is gonna go up to three. Okay, and then my lower discord in the back is gonna go up to 12. Small of him right here. Gonna move forward six inches because he is bracketed. So I'm gonna go right. So remember that these guys are gonna score me like two points. Oh, point. this game is no longer about objectives. Okay. Well, it appears that objectives are no longer important, so killing is the order of the day. Dave gets aggressive, and I hope that he uses some of that aggression to deal with the blade guard vets in the middle to deny Tack Olds a moment. Now for the end of the movement phase, I am going to spend two CP for the Tide of Traitors. So that oh. takes my cultists <laughs> out of combat. Dave continues to get aggressive and put those cultists in tax deployment zone. And after that, I imagine he's probably gonna raise some banners. Well, first things first, I know that I do wanna kill some ATV with some Bale Flamer. So that's exactly what I'll do. Well, I guess that's a no on the banners then. Oh, oh no! Gonna be one of those kind of them. Okay, uh, that- okay, Five up. That is not a five. That goes through. Plasma guns at the row of eradicators. Supercharged. First one, second one. Okay, one hit, that's a wound, minus three. Excellent, okay, two wounds. So I'm a little bit torn here because I do know that your blade guard is gonna get two victory points right if I don't kill them because they're in the center of the board. That's not good for business. Your eradicators, also not good for business because they like to kill things way too easily if they remember to shoot twice, which you did this time. That sucks for me. Eradicators it is, because really it's about a revenge game, not the center of the objective game. I have to roll separate, okay? So the okay. first one, these amount of hits. Second one. First one, that's a mortal wound. So he's gonna go down another one, down to nine, because he gained one at the beginning of the phase. The others, also hitting on twos, getting all hit. Of eradicators, around seven, okay. Seven. That exactly kills them, doesn't it? Because that's one, yes. and then this is six. Next decimator is gonna fire at... Yeah, I'm thinking your hell blasters. I'm gonna spend a CP on Demon Forge because, you know, he's bracketed, he doesn't hit as well. This is the amount of shots for the first gun and for the second gun. Hitting on fours, but re-rolling everything. And I'm gonna risk it. Yep, yep. so they all hit. Now for the next one. Fours, re-rolling the misses. Yes, they're all hit. And they all wound. Four dead, dude. Four dead. Oh, I love these guys. Yeah, decimating decimators, decimating all day long. Oh, the decimation. I do have a plasma pistol on my Chaos Lord, which I'm gonna use right now to supercharge and kill an infiltrator. Hitting on a two, wounding on a two, because I supercharged. You know what, I'm okay with this, because this is what happens. Oh, I... <laughs> I know, I know. You're helix. I thought it was a helix thing, but you know what? Now I get to use the helix in the close combat phase. In all the games that I play, there's the corn phase. And I know I'm playing it for children, but the corn phase still exists. And that's right now. Because these Mauler Fiends are about to and this Mauler Fiend is gonna charge you now. I think we're gonna overall. Yeah, this was. And that Mauler Fiend only has, how many ones? Three. Three. Bolters, Delta shots. Nothing. Do I command point reroll? Does I really need it? Yes. Who in their right mind command point rerolls fishing for a six? This guy, he does it. So I'm going out to seven. Uh, CP. I am fishing for a six. Here we go. Ah! Ah! Damn it, Tech! What is going on with the sixes? That is a wound. You get a Dave save. Oh, a Dave save is a demon save at five plus? Yeah. Okay, I accept. Yes! Oh, that worked. Seven inch charge, here we go. Getting a 10. Ooh. <laughs> Chaos Lord, charge again, it's your infiltrators now. Down a hill. Six. Down the hill. <laughs> Mauler Fiend on the far side now. Charging your outriders. I see nine, that's a nine. Oh, that's tagged, okay? Oh, wow. The corn phase was so successful this turn, I'm happy. At the start of the fight phase, I'm gonna roll a D3 for my Warlord trait, Faultless Duelist. What, what does that do? takes away that amount of attacks to a minimum of one for everything that is attacking me. Two, minus two. I'm gonna spend one CP going down to six command points on Demon Forge. Fists first, because three damage a piece. I'm gonna reroll that three. And that's two wounds at minus three. Please, dice gods, please. Oh, one's dead. 
The Lasher Tendrils, six attacks. Hitting on fours, rerolling misses. And the ATV barely survives. I'm gonna spend the two command points to interrupt. Counter offensive with those outriders, great call attack. Not sure how long those bikes would have lasted against that Mauler Fiend. But now we'll just have to see how much damage they can really do. Whoa. Oh, one. Whoa. Okay, that was totally not worth it. Uh, okay, I went through. Right, I went through. Now, are you three wounds at peace? Four. Therefore, lash your tendrils first. One hit. No wounds. no wounds. Now for the Fists of Fury. Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! And the uh, Outriders on. survive. I'm gonna go with my Chaos Lord. This is the time for my Chaos Lord to shine. He's got his Faultless Duelist. He has his Raiment Revulsive. He's re-rolling hits and wounds. It should be a cakewalk. Thunderhammer, five attacks on the charge. And re-rolling that one. I need a five up. The Helix is used. I take no damage from that. I save two, one dice. Thank goodness for the Helix. The Infantrators have survived. Obsec on that objective, and that's gonna get me some points. That should have been a sure thing, but it wasn't. Here at the end of turn one, Dave scores two points for Engage on All Fronts, and Tack takes home four points for Odes a Moment and two points for Bring It Down. At the beginning of Tack's second turn, he scores 15 points for Primary. Rough news, Dave. And he also scores two points for Raise the Banners High, bringing him to 23 points in total. Without my heavy hitters on the table, I've now got to just weather the storm. I know he's got his obliterators, he's got his warp talents. So I'm gonna spread out across the board and limit where he can drop them. My outrider bikes, yes. we're going to use stratagem, uh, fall back and re-engage, which will allow them to fall back, but still charge. The great thing about ultramarines here in Tack's movement phase is their ability to fall back and still shoot. Tack is gonna get the power that he wants from his units while he's still getting the movement that he needs. Tack continues to do exactly what he says he's gonna do by spreading across the board to guard a turn two obliterator drop by Dave. I'm not really sure if Tack has done enough here to stop Dave's obliterators, but we will need to see how drastically they impact the game. I vote to give Tack a one-way ticket to T-Shirt City. Yeah. Going into the shooting phase, the Hellblaster here is going to go into the Moloch that only has three wounds remaining. I am going to supercharge those, so this is really risky. Give him the chapter master reroll so it gets both. That is not a wound, I needed a four. The dreadnought, because you really only had one target. Everything is going to go into the Molar Feed. How many shots from the Acroplasma? This is where I was saving my command point reroll. All right. Five, Ooh. I will take five. <laughs> Tack, did you like waste all your energy in the first round of the race here? That's Wow. Bad. Can I just call this? Like, it's not gonna matter. <laughs> Four up save. Okay, well, I'm down to seven wounds on him. Aggressors are gonna go into the Muller Fiend. Down to four wounds. Everything from this tank has to go into the Decimator. The one with three wounds left? The one with three wounds left. When also I got in Ken to the Decimator. Take three. I have three left. I'm gonna command reroll. 50-50 chance that your plans have been thwarted. Yes! Oh yes! no! One freaking wound. Tempest. Yes! Oh my goodness! And I just can't get it. Wow, with one wound left. You're not gonna shoot the threat right in front of you? Are you kidding? I have to do both. You're gonna split. I'm gonna split fire. You no. split fire! <laughs> Actually, you know what? All of it's going to the dust matter. <laughs> Got one hit. Yes! Yes! Things are not dying. Things just aren't dying. Dave's Chaos Lord takes a beating from the Outriders and the Infiltrators, but it just doesn't seem to do the trick. My Chaos Lord has two wounds remaining, Tack. Yeah, he's still alive. We're into your favorite phase of the game. Redemptor Dreadnought is going to charge into the Mala Fiend. I accept. You accept? Yes. You go that way. The bikes are going to charge. Now they fell back. They can still charge even though they fell back because that's they're ultramarines. Why that's why I spent the command points for full back and re engage. Uh, all right. That is a six. This is where it gets interesting. Faultless duelist now. Beginning of the fight phase. I roll a d3. 
Uh, you take out two attacks per Outrider that it's in engaging range. All of them go down to one attack each. Then I add in two more each for devastating charge. I add in one more each for an Astartes Chainsword. And then I add in one more each for Angel to Death. How many attacks do they have? Pots. I can miss a lot. I have two wounds left, making five, four up saves. I'm still alive. No. no. Oh, 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 I can command reroll. I will reroll of that one on there a four go. plus. And the Outriders yeah. don't kill the Chaos Lord. Oh, a command reroll to save the day. Things are not dying. Things just aren't dying. Redemption Dreadnought is the last charger, so he's going to go. Three uh, ones! Oh. I have to make every single one here, pretty much, okay? Pretty much. Dave continues to roll oh hot, God. but oh. one goes through oh. and oh. takes down the Mollerfiend. So, let's see if I explode. Oh, yeah. No, no, no explode this time. All right, Dave, Chaos Lord into the uh, Rider Bikes. The name of the strat is perfect for what's about to happen. Dave activates his Chaos Lord and uses the stratagem Cruel Duelist. And I need sixes, otherwise death. Oh! oh! So the one with one wound dies. The start of Dave's turn, he is holding on to two objectives, scoring him 10 points for his primary score. Inferno Regeneration begins to heal Dave's demon engines and Tack has had such an awful turn that actually, I'm just gonna let Dave tell you all about it. Take it away, Dave. Tack just had a really horrible turn. Now, as much as that's really sad for him, I really enjoy it really much, I can't help it. I really have to do my best to do as much damage on this turn as possible. Dave takes an aggressive stance in his movement phase, positioning the Mauler Fiend to charge one of the backline objective holders and moving the Decimator engines into strong shooting positions. and finally dropping both the Warp Talons and the Obliterators in his back corner to try and deal with the Ultramarines cutting into his back line. Alrighty, on to the shooting phase. Combination of Flamer style weapons and supercharged plasmas don't do a lot to tax forces on the right flank of the board, amounting to just two damage done to the Gladiator. These Obliterators are itching to shoot some stuff into your infiltrator. And the obliterators, flesh metal guns, they get strength nine, AP minus three, only one damage. Oh, that is great for attack. One command point to transhuman them. Look at all the fours. Six wounds at minus three. I really hate the helix combat. Like, why does that exist? With the helix reducing the first damage to zero, only two infiltrator casualties to the obliterators. The Decimator engine fires into the last Invader ATV, lifting it from the table. Go, Dave! This Decimator engine is gonna spend one CP on Demon Forge. Dave uses the Decimator engine on the tank instead of the Blade Guard Vets. I have a feeling this is a wrong move because Tack can use Armor of Contempt. Well, Armor of Contempt, so I'm burning the command point. Uh, do I farm it? I do, I don't burn it. And then any five ups. Oh, well, ignore the mortal wounds. Now he's gonna pass more saves than he really should. Uh, ooh, I ignore four, down to six. The obliterators use endless cacophony into the infiltrators. Probably not really what Dave wanted, but I understand wanting to just get rid of one unit, especially with that objective secured ability that they have. So still forced to wound you. And finally the infiltrators are gone. That took way too long. I'll charge your tank with my Lord Discordant. That's 12, I need 11. Okay, I need a good roll here. Oh! oh wow. <laughs> Boxcars on this charge? Come on now, this is awesome. Corn definitely, I mean, his Slanesh wants it too, but Corn definitely wanted this. This is actually quite important. My Warp Talents are going to charge your Dreadnought. Now you can't overwatch me because my special blinding ability that states you can't overwatch me. For one command point, I will spend it on Honor the Prince mm -hmm. and change this three to a six. There you go. And get into combat. For my last CP, I'm gonna spend it on Veterans of the Long War. So instead of fives, it'll be fours to wound you. Mm -hmm. I got a good amount of attacks, mm -hmm. and we all know what the new Death to the False Emperor does. Why don't you remind the audience? On my sixes to hit, that just grants me additional hits. Don't even need to roll them. 
That's a decent amount of six. Four wow. sixes, okay. Four sixes. Death to the false emperor. Yep. Putting on fours because of veterans and rerolling because of lightning claws. Exactly enough to kill him. Yes. If I make no saves at all. I'm up. Uh, so that is four saved. That's four remaining. He's definitely on his second bracket. Lord Discordant now versus Yard. Thank you. Okay, six attacks on the charge. Fives and sixes, death to the false emperor because plus one to hit. Four is to wound then, because yep. we have T8. So my three goes to a five. Uh, I saved one. Two damage each. Two damage each, so that's six damage. I am down to dead. Do you explode? Oh, oh no! no oh. That's actually really good for me, because you're dudes! If it dies, then he takes objective. Hellblaster? Hellblaster is dead, and Dave takes hold of that objective. Captain in Gravis Armor takes one. Lieutenant also takes one. All right, Tech Marine. Ooh, three. three. Lord of Scorn takes two. So Mahler Fiend. Mahler Fiend is Ooh, down three. to one wound. So I'm going to fight back with this Dreadnought. So hitting on fours. The Redemptor being bracketed, it only manages to kill three of the Warp Talents. Still behind on points, but... Look at the success of that turn. That was devastating. Dave was able to score three points for grinding them down and another two points for engage on all fronts. While Tack was able to add three more points to Odes of Moment, two points for Raise the Banners High, and two more points for Bring It Down. I am on two objectives, so I'm going to score five and then 10 for those two objectives. You have knocked off the flag from this one. So that flag goes away, but I do retain the flag here. So Wisdom of Ancient uh, re-rolling ones to hit with the uh, Dreadnought. If I get it back, I actually don't spend it. Dave's forcing me to make a lot of tough decisions. I'm gonna have to maneuver in a way to try to maximize my ability to keep him off of those objectives because otherwise he's gonna catch up in points really quick. Give these guys options because that's a lot of attacks, a lot of things that they're capable of doing that are more important now than staying on the center. He needs to shoot, because I need to at least do some things to those obliterators. So there is going to be a fallback there. Tack maneuvers to compensate for Dave's aggressive plays on the right flank, and I think the plan here is to retake some lost ground. So starting off the festivities, the uh, bikes are gonna try to do something to your warlord. Hitting on threes. Wounding on uh, fours, so that is all three at AP2. Okay. You have a deep save. I'm dead. No, you are dead. Missile launcher, macroplasma will go into the obliterators. Flame mirror, effect storm will go into the warp talents. See how many shots I get? I get three. So wounding on threes. Well, two die. Three from the effect storm is AP1. Dead. Missile launcher into the uh, obliterators. How many shots do I get? I get one shot. I'm hitting on fours. I do hit. That is a wound. Take. How many shots do I get with the macroplasma? And I'm going to overcharge. Two. Okay, I will command point reroll that. Try to get some more shots. How many shots do I get? Two. Fours. No hits. Would be a mortal wound. However, I did wisdom of the ancients. And I'm wounding on threes. Five up and vulnerable. Save. And I make it. Aggressors are going into the obliterators. I'm hitting on threes, rerolling ones because of the uh, wisdom of the ancients. And I may, ooh. So one goes through. Tech Marine is going to fire into the in the back. Ooh. All hit. Five and sixes. That yeah, goes through. Uh, two damage. Just dies. I don't have a command reroll. So I do I explode? I don't. <laughs> Three heavy uh, bolt pistols into the uh, ball team. All misses? All misses. Okay. It was three ones. Jay brought his family. The captain is going to go into the uh, baller fiend. All hit. I needed that on the wounding though. Uh, one. Four up save. And he dies. Right, Do I explode? I explode! There's so many explosions in this one. Nick must be just so excited. Explosions like this are so rare and they just keep coming. Intercessors are going into the Lord's Square. 
Intercessors do two wounds to the Lord Discordon, and it is starting to look rough. We are going to proceed into the charge phase. They're going to try to charge. Attack fails the charge, but command point rerolls to get those blade guard vets in. Very nice, Tack. Lieutenant is in with three. I don't agree that Tack should put all his characters into that Lord Discordon. It seems pretty risky. You can only attack me one thing. I always count as fighting first in the fight base, so choose wisely. Blade guard vets are going into the Discord first. They're hitting on Breeze. Winning on fives, rolling ones because of my lieutenants. Survive, I'm gonna do a lot of uh, I use two. two. My Lord Discordant down to four wounds, but I always count as attacking first because I'm Emperor's Children, so I'm going to proceed to kill something here. Yeah. Or multiple things, depending on how lucky you feel. Oh, that's actually true, actually. Split everything, every single attack. Don't do it, Dave. I actually have four things I'm gonna attack you with. I could go all four units. Could. But nope, I got a lot of attacks coming your way. I am going to split them. Impaler Changlave yeah. and my Mecha Tendrils going into your lieutenant. Blade of Limbs and Tail and my Technovirus Injector going into your TAC. You're gonna kill TAC? Yes, very much so. In fact, I'm gonna roll for it first. Hitting on twos, fives and sixes spawn more, but that's one, but that's all I need because it does a lot of damage. And wounding, well, that six is definitely going to wound. This is AP four? Minus four. Minus four. I get a six. Okay. You know what, we've seen this happen before. We'll see it again. Ah! Oh, Dave, you can't see it, but I'm shaking my head. Okay, Lady limbs and tail now. That oh, is geez. all wounds, seven wounds. Four, you get to roll 3d3, he has five wounds. Okay, first one does two wounds, second one does three, enough. and then that's enough. Enough! Just... That's enough to kill him, let me get the satisfaction, I'm rolling the dice! Kill Tack! I mean, oh. Okay, now for the Impaler Chain Glaive, this is against the Lieutenant. Five up. And the Lieutenant dies, and only the Captain can attack back, but fails to kill the Lord Discordant. So that was a devastating turn. Like, I am the back foot right now. I need to do my best to get as many objectives as I can. It's an uphill battle, but there's still a chance. So therefore, we're gonna trudge forward. Dave is right. There is a glimmer of hope for chaos here. However, there is a lot to do. Dave scores 10 points by holding onto those two objectives, but Tax solidifies his lead by adding some more points to bring it down secondaries. Come on, Dave. I'm rooting for you, buddy. You can do it. Ooh. Ooh. All the things? They can kill all the things? They can. Oh, and they're going to kill all the things. Dave is expecting a lot out of these obliterators. And if things do go his way, it could really pay off. The rest of the movement phase is spent moving his decimator engine into a firing lane and moving the cultists so that they survive and continue to get him engaged on all fronts. On to the shooting phase now. This is actually quite important. Lord Discord, in combat, is gonna shoot your captain. D6, that's four. Auto hitting. Four wounds at minus two. Four up in bone, and I pass two. Yeah. That takes me down to two wounds remaining. Decimator now shooting at your intercessors in the back. So on the one gun, on the Ooh. other, that's so many shots. Not within range of the Lord Discordant, so hitting on threes. I get a mortal wound, brings me back, back down to six there. And then for the other gun, I get another mortal wound. So three mortal wounds. Kill one, and one's got a wound left. Now for the obliterators. I'm thinking all of the shots at your dreadnought. No. Yeah, I want to take him out because he's... Ah, actually, no, you're saying that like it's bad, but it's like you're trying to distract me from your aggressors who have a lot more shots. But I can roll for the strength of whatever and then decide. Strength of the guns. Strength plus one. Strength seven. AP minus three. Two, two damage. damage. So the two damage actually does more to the aggressors than it does the redemptor, because the redemptor will take it down to one. Correct. So, choose wisely, Dave. Aggressors. That is a wise choice, and the choice I was wishing you would not make. <laughs> yeah. Hitting on threes. Wounding our threes. Dead aggressors. Super All right, so far so good, Dave. Seven is charged with a spawn, and I don't make it. That's not good for business there. But my Lord Discordant is in combat, counts as always attacking first. Therefore, I will attack you first. Paler Changlave, Mecha Tendrils is in the spawn. All the rest of the attacks are gonna go to Blade Guard. No, Techno Virus as well, into the captain. I just really wanna make sure I get him. And Paler Changlave, hitting on twos. I just need two four ups. Oh! oh yeah. Five saloons. Tack, techno virus injector. You got a two. I'm looking for a five or six here. That's one wound. 
You've put so much work into this. Oh yes. Is this your last attacking tool? Uh, yep. Ah! Bladed limbs and tail into the blade guard. And the two up goes so far. <laughs> Here we go. How many fives can I get? Five plus and vulnerable saves. Made two to go through, but that is death. Here at the end of turn three, Dave is able to add a few points to his score with engage in all fronts, but Tack is able to hold on to his lead, adding even more points to bring it down. Going into turn four, it's kind of just mop up. Surprisingly, I was able to take down some of the bigger units on the right flank, and I have held the objectives on the left flank. So I think I'm gonna to start to run away with the points. I've really just got to make no mistakes, take out what I need to, um, and then I hope the game's in the bag. Dreadnought is going to try his very best at doing something to those obliterators. Blade Guard are going to charge the Decimator Engine. And then the Outriders are going to charge the spawn. Spikes will go first. I could miss a lot. Uh, maybe, maybe. You take out two spawn with that. The uh, chapter, chapter master rerolls. Only four to your four wounds remaining. Involved saves. Nope, made none. Do Ooh. I explode? I do! Oh, wow. Explosion! <laughs> it looks like I'm gonna have to play with the Tau because the, there's no way I can catch up from this. Congratulations. Thank you very much. It's yes. a good game. And right. with that handshake, we come to the end of this tabletop rivalry with the Ultramarines after we add in those painting scores, securing a score of 77 points to the Heretics, 45. Tack, you win fair and square, and now you get to be happy in seeing this, and everyone is gonna be sad not seeing the t-shirts that you could have designed. I'm really excited for Dave to play Tau. I think this is gonna be the game of the year. It's gonna have so much fun. It's gonna be amazing. I gotta play with the Tau now. Yes, you do, Dave. Yes, you do. One more big thank you to Dave from Mini Wargaming and to Ravage Star. Be sure to check out the description below if you wanna get in on the ground floor of what is going to be an amazing line of miniatures. From all of us here at Play on Tabletop, this is Space Marine Steve closing the chapter on this rivalry, Googling how to play Tau for Dave, and excited to see you all in the far-flung future of this grim, dark universe. Play on. It was a fantastic game. It really was. It went a lot of back and forth. There was a lot of carnage and death and blood and guts on the battlefield, and that's all I could really ask for. I love collaborations. People from other studios coming to our studio play have a lot of ideas thrown around, see a lot of different play styles. I would love to have more games with Dave, have Dave come down, or even maybe, maybe we're heading to the bunker. Let's see.